Now, the second piece of really important historical evidence comes from something called the photoelectric effect. Now, in this experiment, light is shone at the surface of a metal, and electrons can be ejected. But in this experiment, when light hits a metal, say potassium, above a particular wavelength, no electrons are ejected. So above a particular wavelength, that means below a particular frequency. So below, below this critical wavelength, electrons are ejected and can be detected, and their energy can be measured. And importantly, turning up the intensity of the light does not change the critical wavelength. So it doesn't matter if you turn your light power up to gigawatts, there won't be any electrons ejected unless you hit a certain wavelength and your light is shorter than that wavelength. So for potassium, for example, the critical wavelength is 625 nanometers. For wavelengths shorter than that, you'll see electrons. For wavelengths longer than that, you won't. This corresponds to a frequency of 4.8 by 10 to the 14 hertz. I'm going to look now in the next part of the video at a simulation of this experiment, um, which you can look at yourself on this website. So here's our little simulation of the photoelectric effect. The setup is we have a lamp here and we can choose the frequency of the lamp, the color of the light in other words, and its intensity. So a slider here for frequency, slider here for intensity. It shines on a metal target. The metal in the simulation is sodium. Sometimes electrons will be ejected and if they are, they can be collected by this electrode over here. So let's, I'll return the intensity up. Let's turn up the frequency, so decrease the wavelength and see what happens. Now at some point around about here, 530 nanometers or so, we start to see electrons being ejected. And if electrons are ejected, we'll start to measure a current. So what this is saying is that in order to release an electron from the sur surface of the metal, you need to have a certain amount of energy because it's the electron is sitting in a potential well and you need to give it enough of a kick for it to get out. But it doesn't matter if I go down to a longer wavelength and turn the, change the intensity, it's not going to eject any electrons. It's to do with the frequency or the wavelength of light as to whether electrons are ejected or not. And what this is saying is that each bit of light must be divided into some sort of particle and the energy of the particle is proportional to the frequency. So in order for a particle of light to eject a single electron, that particle of light, that quantum of light, must have enough energy to overcome the binding energy of the electron in this surface. So there's some critical wavelength where the ejection will turn on and off. And what's more, you can measure the energy of the electrons traveling through this system as a function of the frequency, like this. And you look at this graph here is that I traced out by changing the frequency in the simulation. Now the slope of this line here, we've got frequency and energy. In Planck's formula, energy is equal to Planck's constant times frequency. The slope of this line here will be Planck's constant. The um, other graph that's interesting to look at here is current versus light intensity. If I change the light intensity, I get a linear slope. So as I change the intensity, the current changes linearly. And if I change the frequency, then the energy electrons changes linearly with the frequency of the light. So to summarize the results of that experiment, we saw a curve like this, or a straight line like this, I should say, as a function of the frequency of the light. And this is the energy electrons. The slope of this straight line is Planck's constant h. The intercept here is the binding energy of the electrons in the metal. So the kinetic energy is equal to hf minus the binding energy. That's the description of this line. The slope, as I said, gives you h, which is Planck's constant, which is about 6.626 by 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. And the key finding here is that light is made of particles, and the energy of each particle is given by E equals hf. Now, Einstein won the Nobel Prize for describing the photoelectric effect in this way in 1921. So Einstein, best known for relativity, was also one of the uh, founding theorists who came up with some really important early groundwork in quantum mechanics.